Let's play Tron. Not the movie, but we're going to play the video game today. This is a fantastic movie. I can recall it pretty clearly as a kid watching this movie. I asked my dad to take me and a friend. We go to the local Cinema 4 here. And he sets through it for about 30 minutes, gets up and says, I don't understand any of this crap. And he leaves and goes and catches a movie next door. Whatever it was, it didn't matter. It could have been a girly movie. It could have been a, a horror movie. Two genres of movies that he would care less about. But he was not going to watch any more of this crazy Tron movie. But I loved it. Being a technology-focused kid, I dug it. My, my redneck buddy that was next to me, he was spaced out by it. He thought it was great. And we enjoyed it. Um, and then... The, the video game was out right around the same time. And so let's have a look at that video game cabinet. I've owned one of these. This is not a photo of the one that I owned. Um, as most of these photos are, I find them online. But uh, a couple of similarities to my cabinet. That is an original. And my cabinet was an original. If you look at these cabinets, I have several photos here. Um, they're, they're absolutely beautiful. And we can thank George Gomez of pinball fame who worked for Bally. Um, and he worked with Bally Midway, or not Bally Midway, but Williams Bally Pinball for many years and then went on to Stern Pinball where he works now. And he's a nice guy. But he's talked a few times about the Tron game and the joystick. And, you know, he's a designer he was a production style designer um so the joystick the environment of the cabinet the artwork th those are very much a george gomez result here it's a very attractive one this picture doesn't do it justice it's kind of a heavy flashed photo just so you could see the insides of it but that's not naturally how you would see it it would look a little bit like this in a high lit environment um, you can see the sort of holographic MCP uh, there in the background, if you know the movie. Uh, this is a really good photo of a very, very nice Tron. Fully restored, I guess. Possibly a whole rebuilt cabinet, maybe. I don't know. But it just looked beautiful. Really attractive. The colors were great. They really popped with these black lights that are inside of it. So it was a very welcoming uh, cabinet. You know, you wanted to walk up to it and see what was inside, which was great. And everything about this looks good. Uh, heavily flashed photo here. You can see the control panel. We have a joystick. And the joystick has a trigger button. Player one, player two, start. And you have a spinner on the left. So spinner on the left, it's going to be a little problematic when we try to emulate on a keyboard. Now, if you have a spinner, of course, it's awesome. That's a simple optical spinner, as I recall. Um, and, and my cabinet, my spinner just needed to be cleaned. The opto. And it was fine, actually. It was just a little skittish. Let's have a look at this joystick, though. This one is a Gomez design. As far as I can remember, um, that would be his baby. And it was the same one used on Satan's Hollow. And I think maybe another game or two. And I love this picture. Uh, this is something that was out on Pinterest. A uh, photo that looks like it could have been back in the day. Maybe some years after this game was on location. But I bring this one up to show you the width of the cabinet. Let's back up one. Or let's back up three. This cabinet is unique to Tron. So, uh, I don't know, 20 years ago, whenever I was going to these coin-op auctions, it was sad to see games that were kit games installed in these cabinets. You could see from a mile away, that's a Tron cabinet because it was very defined in its shape. And it was just kind of sad, you know, whenever you see that painted black and, and some stickers with the Romstar logo or, or anything, uh, anybody's logo put on it, and maybe a Super Kicks kit game you know, installed in it. Um, long gone or the spinner and the joystick. Um, the black lights may still be in it. 
oftentimes it would just spray paint that bottom light that you see that's had a black light in it. So it was kind of a bummer to see that happen. But anyway, uh, great game. Uh, oh, great movie. Game? I think the game, the game cabinet is an A+, plus, 10 out of 10. I think the game is, it was fun to play back in the day. And I'll tell you why. But it wasn't a great game for me. At owning the game, it was more of a fixture, almost an art piece. I'd play it once in a while, but usually just turn it on whenever I was entertaining people so they could see it. And they would play it a little bit. But I don't remember having any heavy-duty competitions on Tron. Still a very fun game to play. Just earning real estate in my basement is very difficult to do. And that's why today all I have in my basement is one MAME emulator in a cabinet, and the rest is loaded with pinball machines. So let's get on to the gameplay. Okay. Ignore the stuff on the right and left. Of course, that's just replicating artwork. What we're always interested in is the business in the middle. So I am going to have to finagle some controls to act like a spinner here, and it's gonna be a little weird. Quarter in, uh, one player. So the music was great. And it, it uses a stereo board inside of it, very much like Satan's Hollow, same hardware, I'm sure. Um, I am on RPG here. That's the beginner level. So I'll move over and pick a colored quadrant of that start screen. So on the start screen, whenever you go into a colored coordinate, I don't think, I think it's randomized. You know, just because I went into orange doesn't mean I'm always going to get to try to enter the MCP cone here. But uh, having not watched the movie, if that's you, you wouldn't understand this, but that's okay. Because a lot of this stuff is very loosely connected to the arcade game. Let's play it. I'm going to move my character around. I can move his arm. And I just fire away. And the goal is to knock out all these blocks here. And enter the top. And if you get them all, you'll get a bonus. Which is important because this game is an incredibly high scoring game. I'm going to have to move my arm down. Here we go. Should be just a few more. Got it. So that's really all you have to do there. Um, okay, light cycles. A lot of fun, kind of like a snake game. Um, you have your button, controls your speed, and, oh shoot. <laughs> what I thought I did there is I turned earlier. I was sure I turned earlier, but I left him a gap to get through it. I let off the gas pedal. End of me, let's fix that. Let's do it right this time. Not quite sure what that thing is above the text with the yellow arrow. Interesting. You just kind of draw a box around him. Oh, jeez. Not a good showing by me. Man, oh man, terrible. Let's do it right this time. There we go. That's all it is. It's a shame I couldn't get that right. All right, next one over. This could be tanks. No, it's not tanks. This is the spider guys. So on this one, I need to move my arm around a little bit to find the key to do that. And you just kill these guys. Goodness gracious, I can't keep this arm in control. Okay, you just need to make a path. And you get inside here before time runs out. As you go up, you can move your hands around if you want. But uh, you've just taken the IO tower up there. So this last one's gonna be the tanks. Um, I just need, we have ricocheting bullets, so this is good for me. I will just kind of park somewhere with my turret. I can move out of the way if I want to, of course, but I can just ricochet off a little bits and pieces and my little bullets will pop the guys. So whenever you complete all four of the quadrants, guess what? It's a repeat again and again and again. So I'm looking at 5,300 points um, after the first wave. I'm sure there's all kinds of tricks and hints to help you get a higher score. But ultimately, you're going to be repeating this again and again. And as you do, it's more difficult. So let's see how more difficult it is on the cobalt level. Okay, I got three tanks. Uh, I can't believe I didn't die there because I can't control my turret quite like I want. 
I'm trying to get those guys. Oh, better duck. And move, hurry. Oh, man, I got lucky. Difficult to do <laughs> on a keyboard. Okay. Sp uh, spider, this is going to be kind of hard to do because I really need to control the directional shooting of my little dude's arm here and not get whacked by a spider and do all this before time runs out. So the, really the strategy here is just to... I better just get in there. The strategy here is just to um, make a hole, right? And then with whatever free time you have, blow up some more spiders. They're really not worth a lot. Okay, this one is to do a jig jag like this. And then you really got one to deal with. Uh oh, better give it some gas. That'll do it. So um, that one is, that's my strategy at least for wave two. Okay, these are moving a little faster here, but I can shoot faster. So some people will just make a hole and try to just get up in there, right? And they're done. I think completing all these, um, and this MCP is very doable. I don't know how doable it is with this keyboard setup I got, but um, I better put my arm down and do this little maneuver. Watch this, when you go to the right, it actually drags you to the right, the whole screen. It's kind of interesting. Um, okay, so now I'm on basic. Do you get the idea of what's happening now? We're getting old school programming languages to describe each one of these. I, I, is it a wave? I guess a wave or board. Um, but this is where I'm gonna die because I'm not really good at the third basic wave here. Oh, I'm, I'm truly toast. Oh yeah, I figured you'd get me there. And I think that's it, or do I have a free guy? I got a free guy out of the deal. So MCP is really moving along now, and it's moving the opposite direction. So the goal here is just to find a hole and get in. And I've beat my previous score, so I guess I should be happy. Um, not a lot to, ooh, not a lot of time to think there. One, two, three, four, five, so I had six tanks there. Game over, it didn't last very long. Um, I guess as a player I feel fulfilled <laughs> that I did well. And it's a two initial high score game, kind of strange. And it allows you to continue. So if I do continue, it's just going to be uh, it's going to be extremely painful here because I'm not going to do well. You're going to see me just die like really quick. Um, jumping into the center diamond does throw you kind of in a random area. I kind of think of it as a hyperspace thing, um, kind of like asteroids. You just kind of randomly pop up. Okay, now this one I'm usually pretty good at. You just got to fire your little guts out, make a hole, get up in there. Oh, I did it! I did it really easily. It looks like. Uh, but that's the strategy, at least on that way. And my hope was always to to get this, uh, you know, get through here and stand kind of where I'm at so I can just wipe them out for points. But if you look at my score, again, these guys are only worth like 50 points a piece, so not a lot of points to gain. And eventually you just pop up in here and get out of there and wave at everybody or do other gestures that aren't, that aren't very nice. Okay, I have the most likelihood of making it through the tank, so I'm going to go for that. Maybe just drive around a little bit and commit suicide. Never would drop another quarter. I mean, I did, but I wouldn't do it regularly because it just didn't make sense. Just you're hoping to get lucky with a little bit of, nah, done. So those people that really play this game, they're fun to watch because I, I just admire people who are really good at games. And Tron was one of those. It was fun to watch people. Um, not watching me, though. And you did, and I'm sorry that you did. <laughs> but hopefully I've described the game to you, you think it's interesting, and you'll check it out. At least admire the game for what it was in the annuals of arcade game history. The designer that, that did such a fantastic job on that cabinet, um, George Gomez, he was amazing. And speaking of which, because I'm a pinball guy and I want to you know, throw out some kudos where possible, um, I did discover while digging up some information about this particular game that we're talking about today, um, I discovered there is a podcast called Retronauts that I've not heard. And on this episode, apparently it was during the pandemic, uh, there's an interview with George Gomez, and he talks about Tron and Spy Hunter. So, uh, yeah, I think you'll hear about his industrial design background 
and really what he applied to this game that was very successful. Uh, a couple of side notes, too. The Wikipedia says about this game, I think it was Wikipedia. Yes, says New York Times reported that 800 arcade cabinets were sold in 1982. And then it says by January 83, it was number four on the replay arcade charts. The book, The Naked Computer, reported that Tron made $45 million by 1983. And in U.S. Gamers estimate, estimate, estimation, 10,000 cabinets were sold and the game made more than 30 million of revenue by 1983. So Naked Computer says 45 million. U.S. Gamers says 30 million. Um, I have no idea. But we know it was millions of dollars that was made. Now the question is, who made it? Was it Bally Midway, the company that designed the game and made the game and sold it to the operators or what, um, distributors and then operators? Or was it actually money that was made with quarters dropped at the old slots? I don't know. But I am glad that it still lives on. And I'm exceptionally proud that the Tron movie series is still moving forward, it sounds like. Um, and so I'm happy about that. So play Tron. And uh, whenever you get done playing Tron, watch the movie. And then whenever you're done watching the, and I mean the original, and whenever you're done watching the original, hop back up and play a few games of Tron and see if you're any better.